Welcome back to a new video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a glass tank. But before we start, make sure to check the link or the video right here for the giveaway, which ends this Friday. So you got two, maybe one or two days from the time this video goes up to participate on that giveaway of this while the mix transitions back. Okay, let's get started with the video. Okay, so here we have three different styles, which are pretty much the same. The only thing that changes is the background. And then on this last one, there's a little bit of a difference in the way that they are actually blended. Like you can see here, it sort of like reflects the background right away. And the same thing here, the only thing that changes here is the background. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new fusion composition as always. Now here in Fusion, the first thing that we want to do is as always, we're going to create a background node and here you can put a color to it or you can just make it transparent. In this case, we can make it transparent first of all, so that when we are working with, we can see things a little bit better. Okay. So then the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to press control M and we're going to add a text node. You can also add a text node by going here. I just like to use control M always. Okay, so here on our text now, what we're going to do is we're going to write the word free because we're going to use this background and I can bring these already here so we can see it and we can adjust the size of what we want it to be. And you can do all that custom like font and all that stuff. I'm going to leave that up to you. In this case, I want to choose put the text to be 0.7. And for now, I'm going to get rid of these media out. So we just have the transparent background for the first thing that we need to do is we're going to go to the shading element and then on the element one, what we're going to do is we're going to change the opacity. So we're going to lower these opacity to around, let's say 1.28. Then the blending mode, it's going to be transparent and you're not going to see that big of an effect right now, but that is just sort of what I found best. It's subtle, right? Now, the next thing that we want to do is we're going to go down here to softness. You can also change the color here if you want your glass, I guess, to be on of a, like a different shade. I guess if you want it to be greenish, it's going to be like that. Just got to make sure that you add this color to the other elements that we're going to add too. So for the softness, we're going to put this softness really small. So it's going to be like 0.6. You can do 0.63. It's around that that I found to be looking at the best and closest to what we want. Now we're going to apply the softness fill color and we're going to add the glow to be 0.5. So now we have the first layer of our glass. Then we're going to add here to select element and we're going to go to number two and we're going to enable and that's going to create a second layer and automatically it's going to be of a different color. For me, it's always red. I'm not sure if it's going to be different for you, but I'm going to put the same color that our other glass, our other element here it is. And this one is going to be the outline. So for the outline, we're going to leave the opacity at one and the blending mode, we're just going to leave it as it is the thickness two. You can play around if you want it to be a little bit smaller too. I'm just going to leave it at default on that. But what we're going to change in is the softness. For the softness, we're going to go to the X value and we're going to put 1.1. And then for the Y value, we're going to put 0.6 or 0.63 around that too. Now, we're also going to add the glow to these and we're going to put it at 0.48 is what I did for the other one. Okay, so now we have that first layer the, of our text. Now for the next step, which is going to be the blur, we're going to press Ctrl M again and we're going to add a blur node. And on this blur, what we're going to do is we're going to leave the filter to false Gaussian or Gaussian. I'm not sure how you call this. You can play around with the different modes, filters if you want. And then for the blur size, we're going to put it 1.6. Now the blending and the frame, we're just going to leave them as it is. And that is pretty much all that we're going to do with the blur. Now we're going to press Ctrl M again and we're going to add the emboss effect. And right now you see it weird, but we're going to change this emboss emboss, or I'm not sure how you pronounce this to emboss over. Now for the power, it's going to be a little bit uh, higher than one. So we're going to put 7.5 and that's going to add a little sort of like depth into our text. And for the angle, uh, for the other one that I have, I did 8.5. But that's just going to be just to move it around a little bit. Right. And then we're going to leave the channels to be applied to all of them. Otherwise, it's going to have like sort of like RGB color when you don't have either some when you don't have one of these cha channels selected. Now, the next step would be to add a shadow for these. We're going to go 
to our selection tool panel again and we're gonna add a drop shadow and this drop shadow what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust the strength to be 0.75 and the angle, I'm gonna put it, I want it to be coming this way, like the example. So that's gonna be around 135. Now the drop distance, I want it to be, I want it to be a little bit further. So I'm just gonna put it at like 0 0.029, around that mark. And then for the blur of these, we're gonna decrease it a little bit. So around 0.4 should be fine for these. Now the thing is, pretty much set and you can continue to play around with it and like find a few details that you want if you want to adjust but that is up to you the next thing is we're gonna go to the merge node here and we're gonna change the blending mode to multiply you can also use overlay but the effect is gonna look a little bit different so if we put multiply you're gonna see that it's gonna start to take whatever thing is in our background so if we go back to our background node here and we increase the alpha we're not gonna see anything first of all but we're gonna change the color to let's say this yellow greenish i guess and you you see how these sort of like takes the color that our background has so if you change it to any other color and if you animate it it's gonna look like that too okay so then what we want to do next is we're gonna add that sort of like waviness effect for that first of all we're gonna add our media in here so we can see how it looks and it looks sort of like a glass a little bit maybe more like epoxy feel kind of thing but the next thing that we want to do is so to sell the effect a little bit a little bit better is we're gonna press ctrl m and we're gonna add a waviness effect now by default this is gonna affect the whole thing so what we want to do is we're gonna create a mask so that it only affects the inside of our text for that we're just gonna copy this text that we have so it has the same settings and if you want you can rename it i press f2 to change the name text wave mask that is pretty much it then we're gonna connect this and we're gonna adjust a few little things here on the element 2 which is the the border of our glass so here we're gonna change the thickness of it we're gonna lower it to be like 0 0.071 maybe that's what i had in the other one and now you have these set up right but we still have to do one thing here the waveness you can change the effect to be either horizontal or vertical the values are always gonna say the same. So the settings for these are for the scale, it's gonna be 33.1. And we're also gonna uncheck this animate because otherwise the waves are gonna sort of like move and we don't want that because that's gonna look a little bit weird, right? You see how this is moving a lot. And here's where you play around with the strength to so that it affects, so that it looks better, right? And the strength value is actually gonna depend a little bit on the video that you have in your background because some videos might look a little bit better and might need a bit more strength in them. And some others might look a bit too weird. Like here, for example, if a strength is too high, the bridge is gonna be way too distorted and we don't want that. We want the effect to be a little bit subtle, right? So it's gonna be just like that a little bit. And we can also just do horizontal if you don't like the way the vertical looks. And here you can also see how the effect looks too. So for these, we're going to leave it at vertical and it's going to be like, like that, sort of like minimal, right? So now when we play our effect, we're going to see this sort of like glassy text effect. So somebody had asked me to do this tutorial and the main reason why I was able to do this tutorial was because they actually linked to another video of somebody doing that similar effect in Photoshop. So I looked at that video and I saw the effects that they were using and that is how I was able to figure out how to actually do it in Fusion because the effects have pretty similar names on the different softwares doesn't matter what software you use right so that is why i was able to figure out pretty much in like five to ten minutes if you have a tutorial that you want me to make and that you have found it in another software that's the best way for me to be able to figure out because i don't have hours to be just like trying to figure out from just looking at a video like that unless it's like really simple right but that is pretty much it for this video thanks for watching and i hope to see you in the next video here in swabi bye